Welcome back. This is Kevin Tokoff on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to do another linkage problem in genetics. So we're going to find the map distances between the genes. Once we find the gene in the middle, then we're going to calculate the coefficient of coincidence and then determine the interference. So we're going to go through an entire one of these problems. And let's start by filling out this table. So this table gives you several things. You have phenotypes, you have the number of cases of each and the class. Now remember, they will not give you the class of these, whether it's a parental, a single crossover, or a double crossover. Um, they may or may not give you the total. If not, you're just going to add all these up. In this case, it's a pretty easy number to deal with, 1,000. They will either give you the, the letters like this, or the capitals will be plus signs. So just so we're clear, if you see a plus sign, it's the capital version of that letter. So for example, this one is capital A, capital B, capital C. This is capital A, lowercase b, lowercase c, capital A, capital B, lowercase c, so so on and so forth. Okay, let's first begin by identifying both the parentals and the double crossovers. One way to do this is you can actually order these. If you were doing this on an exam, obviously you'd have to rewrite them. Um, you might be able to see these without ordering them, but I'll just do this so it's very easy to tell. I'm actually going to filter this and number these so they're in actually descending order. There we go. Just make that a thousand. Okay. So you can see the two where there's the most of them are these first two. The number is 395 and 381. So that means these two are both parentals. Okay. So let me, oops. Those two are our parentals. Those are always the two where there's the most occurrences of those, and it should be by a pretty large margin, 381 versus 71. The two down here where there's the least of them, these are double crossovers. So I'm going to put that as double crossover 1, and then this one will be double crossover 2. And I usually like to color code these. Um, this is a preference of mine. I think I make these uh, purple. doesn't really matter. And all these ones in the middle, these are therefore single crossovers. So this will be single crossover one, single crossover two, single crossover three, single crossover four. Bold those, I typically make those blue, just arbitrary. So this is what we're dealing with right here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all this, and I'm going to paste it into our PowerPoint, which I already have done here. Now let's go ahead and solve this problem. All right, so the first thing we want to do is figure out the gene that's in the middle. All right, um, here's the way I would say to do that. You're going to compare both parentals, so our parentals are plus B plus and A plus C, plus B plus, A plus C, with both of the double crossovers. So I'm going to compare the first parental with both plus plus C and A B plus, plus plus C, A B plus. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And the general rule is, one of these letters is going to change while the other two stay the same, and then that same letter in the other case has to stay the same while the other two change. So let's see. Here I see this plus sign, which is A. A, it looks like, stays the same while B changes and C changes. In other words, they're flipping from their lowercase to capital or vice versa. So A stays the same. B changes, C changes. So in this other case, A would have to change, which it does, and B stays the same, and C stays the same. So that tells me that A is the gene in the middle. Okay, again, because in one case, when I compare it between the parental and the first double crossover, it stays the same while the other two change, and in the other case, it changes while the other two stay the same. If I really want to verify it, I can do it with the other one as well. Here it looks like A changes, but B stays the same and C stays the same, whereas in this case, A would be expected to stay the same, while B changes and C changes. Therefore, A is the gene in the middle, which I already have here. I'll go ahead and underline it. Now that means B and C flank it on either side. It doesn't matter which order we write that. I'm just going to write B, A, C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a diagram like this, except for the fact I want to do this with respect to the parental. So let's make that plus. This is B. This is plus for the first parental. The second parental is A. The second one is plus, And the next one is C. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to worry about the single crossovers with a diagram like this. Now I need to make sure it's in the order of the genes, B, A, C. Um, and I look here and the parentals are B plus plus. I have to make sure to do the right order, B plus plus. So B, A is capital, C is capital, it looks like. And then for the other one, it's plus A, C. It's plus for B, and then A, and then C. And the way this diagram works is I have to start over here on the left side and I read left to right. These green lines represent the first single crossover. The magenta over here represent the potential second single crossover. And I'm only going to cross over once and I'm just going to read what I get. All right, so here I have B, let's do the first crossover, B, A, C. So I only cross over once at the first one, B, A, C. That looks like this, B, A, C, that's what I get. Little B, little A, little C. I'm actually going to write this B, A, C like that. There we go, and that is actually, that looks like single crossover four. Then let's start at the bottom and cross over at the first one. Plus, plus, plus. That's this one, that's single crossover three. So it turns out that single crossover three and four are actually a pair of single crossovers, all right? Now let's start at the top, but only go over at the second crossover, B plus C. So it looks like this, B plus C, rearrange that real quick, B plus C. And then let's start at the bottom and only do the second crossover, plus A plus. Well, that looks like this, plus A plus. Let me rearrange that, plus A plus. And so those correspond with single crossovers one and two. So that's our other pair. Let me make this come out in front. So single crossovers one and two are therefore a pair. All right, now remember our formula. If we want the gene distance, let me go ahead and copy and paste this on here. If we want the gene distance, what we do is we apply this formula. We add up both the single crossovers that are in a pair, so single crossovers A and B would be one and two respectively, or three and four, and then we add all the double crossovers and divide by the total. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let me open up a text box here, put it down here. All right, here is what we're going to do. Let's do single crossovers one and two first. Let's see, so single crossover one is, it is 71 plus 63, right? And then we have to add the two double crossovers, four plus two is six, right? So the two single crossovers in the pair plus the two double crossovers, four and two is six, and then divide by the total, which is a thousand. So let me see what that is, all right? So 71, I'm using my calculator, plus 63, plus 6, and then divide by 1,000, that is actually 0.14, so 0 0.14. Now, technically the units of this are what we call a morgan. Um, this is not molar, as in chemistry, this is a morgan. And what we would actually do is we would also multiply this by 100 to convert it to the typical units of centimorgans. So I would do 0.14 and then times 100. So 0.14 morgans is also equal to 14 centimorgans. Um, this is actually the answer you would report, but we are also going to use this number in a future calculation whenever we use, when we calculate coefficient of coincidence. So hold this morgan unit in mind. Okay, now the question is, what is this the distance between? Is this the distance between genes B and A or C and A? Well, how do I figure this out? Well, remember single crossover one, when did this result from? This resulted from a crossover at the second case, right? So where did I cross over? B, A to C, A to C. From down here it went B, A to C. So because the crossover happened between A and C, this is the distance between A and C. So this I would say is the distance between genes A and C. All right, so there's my first one. Let's do the other one, which would also imply that it's the distance between A and B, but we'll prove that. All right, so what's our numbers? Let's look at the other single crossovers in that pair, 46 and 38. So 46 plus 38, that single crossover is 1 and 2, 
plus the two double crossovers. Four plus two is six. Divide by the total, which is 1,000, and let's see what we get. So 46 plus 38 plus 6 is 90 divided by 1,000. Uh, this actually is 0 0.09 Morgans. And remember, we're going to use this number in a future calculation. Okay. Now if we multiply that by 100, that's going to give us an even 9 centimorgans. which is the distance between genes A and B. All right, so what we've just done is we've calculated our two map distances or gene distances, okay? So the distance between A and C is 14 centimorgans. The distance between A and B is nine centimorgans. Now here's another follow-up question. What's the distance between genes B and C, the total distance? Well, the total distance, I would just add those two up. Right, so total distance is just 14 centimorgans plus 9 centimorgans, which is, if I'm doing my math right, 23 centimorgans. That's my total distance. Some questions may go a little bit further and ask you this. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I want to calculate the coefficient of coincidence. Basically, you take all the double crossovers and divide by the first distance, and then divide by the second distance, and then divide by the total. All right. So in our case, coefficient of coincidence, you take the double crossovers, which is 6, and you divide by, I'm going to put this all in parentheses. This is very important to get your parentheses right. The first distance, we're actually going to use the Morgan units not the centimorgan units before we multiplied by 100. So this is actually going to be divided by 0.14. I'm going to go ahead and put this in another set of parentheses. And we're going to divide by the other distance, 0.09. And then we're going to divide by the total of all this, 1,000. And whatever this is, that will be our coefficient of coincidence. So let me actually run this calculation. So it's going to be 6 divided by 0.14, answer, divided by 0.09, answer, and then divided by 1,000. So it turns out the number that I'm getting for this, our coefficient of coincidence, is 0 0.4, let's round it to 476. That's our coefficient of coincidence. Now, there's only one last calculation to do. It's usually the interference. Remember, the interference is normally given by 1 minus the coefficient of coincidence, which in this case would be 1 minus 0 0.476, 1 minus 0.476, and so I'm getting our interference is 0 0.524. And both the coefficient of coincidence and interference are unitless. Okay, So this is pretty much all of the calculations that you would probably need to do. You might have to calculate, well you would have to calculate the individual gene distances once you know the gene in the middle, maybe the total distance between the first and third genes, okay, then calculate coefficient of coincidence, and then calculate the interference, okay. And so hopefully this video made a little bit of sense. If you found it confusing at all, I have another video before this in the playlist where we talk about this in a lot more detail. Here I went a little bit more quickly because I'm assuming you know a little bit about linkage, but I go over it a little bit more slowly and in more detail in the previous video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.